What a beautiful display of grains, cereals and nuts, isn't it? We have a very rich food culture and we have developed clever ways of incorporating these in our diet because these are quite nutritious. But did you know these are ticking life bombs? Yes, that's because they are seeds. They may be tiny, they might look lifeless, but under the right conditions, they can bring back life into existence. So in this video, we are going to look at the anatomy of a seed. Now, where do seeds come from? Seeds are basically ovules post-fertilization. Seeds themselves have a seed coat and embryo. Um, embryo has three structures in them. Uh, the radical, the embryonal axis, cotyledons. There could be one or two cotyledons and based upon whether it is one or two, we have monocot and dicot seeds respectively. Let's start with the structure of a dicotyledonous seed. The outermost covering of a dicot seed is the seed coat which has two layers, testa and tegmen. Testa is on the outside whereas uh, tegmen is on the inside. You might be wondering how come you have never noticed two distinct uh, seed coats in a uh, chickpea maybe. But that's because in most of the cases, it's not very evident. Uh, but when you look at pistachios, they're quite evident. The hard shell is actually the testa and the papery structure inside it is the tegmen. Uh, the seed coat is actually the covering of the ovule. Here we have a more distinct testa and tegmen in few of the nuts. The next structure we see on the seed coat is the hilum, which is like a scar on the seed. Um, this is the point where the seed was attached to the fruit. Uh, above the hilum, we have a micropyle, which is more like a pore. A uh, micropyle is important because this is the uh, site of pollen tube entry during uh, pollination event. Uh, in chickpea, these structures are quite evident. We have a deep hilum and we have the micropyle above it. Within the seed coat, we have the embryo, which consists of the embryonal axis and two cotyledons. We have cotyledon 1 and we have cotyledon 2. Cotyledons are often fleshy and they have reserve food material which is used up during the germination process. The two ends of the embryonal axis, uh, we have the radical and the plumule. Radical develops into the root while plumule develops into the shoot. It can be seen better in this depiction of a germinating seed. Endosperm is formed when one of the sperms uh, fertilize two polar nuclei during the fertilization process after pollination. And endosperm's main function is to nourish the embryo. But sometimes at maturity, uh, seeds might or might not contain endosperm. So if the seeds contain endosperm at maturity, they are called as endospermic seeds. And if the seeds have no endosperm, they are called as non-endospermic seeds. So where do the endosperm go? Well, actually nowhere. They are just consumed uh, to make cotyledons because endosperm themselves are nutritious, right? So the endosperm's nutrition is transferred to the cotyledons um, as the food reserve. Uh, peanuts are an example of non-endospermic seeds. We can see really fleshy cotyledons here. And these are some other examples. Um, we have the pea plant. And this is also another uh, nut um, which is non-endospermic. What is interesting here is though there are evidences of uh, a thin layer of endosperm. Uh, they are non-endospermic because their cotyledons are quite big compared to the endosperm. So uh, these seeds are excellent uh, samples to study how endosperms are uh, transformed into cotyledons. The mature endospermic seeds have endosperm and the endosperm is used during the germination process. A very interesting example of this is the castor seed. Um, the cotyledon is present at the center as this very thin layer and the fleshy part that you see outside is the endosperm. Moving on to the structure of a monocot seed. 
uh, examples of monocot seeds are wheat rice maize uh, basically all our grains um but these are also called as one seeded fruit did you know that and they have a technical term called caryopsis and um, one interesting thing about the caryopsis fruit is that uh, the seed coat is not separate from the fruit the seed coat and the fruit wall are fused um also the seed coat is not thin it's quite chewy and membranous it's thick so how would the fusion of seed coat and fruit wall look like on a fleshy fruit um so this is our usual mango um it has its seed surrounded by seed coat and this is our fruit wall uh the three different layers that are present in a fleshy fruit now if there is fusion of seed coat and fruit wall this is what a mango would look like um most of the space inside would be occupied by the seed with a very thin layer of the fruit on the outside so our grains are basically this so we have the fused seed coat and fruit wall um the endosperm in monocot seeds are quite bulky because they store food and uh, the endosperm has an outer covering which is called as the aleuron layer it is a proteinaceous layer um it breaks down the uh, endosperm using some enzymes so that it starts mobilizing the food for the germination process the embryo is actually quite small and it is situated in one corner of the endosperm the monocot seed also has one single cotyledon which is called as a scutellum and then uh, the embryo itself has a short axis consisting of plumule and radical these structures are covered by a sheath um, coleoptile uh, covers the plumule and coleoriza covers the radical um the sheath actually guides the plumule and radical during germination process um so it um guides the plumule to go towards the surface and uh, coleoriza helps the radical to anchor itself to the soil most of the monocot seeds are actually endospermic they retain the endosperm even at maturity uh but we have a very interesting example for a non endospermic monocot seed which is the orchid seed um orchid does not produce any endosperm actually it has no need to produce endosperm because orchids have a symbiotic relationship with fungus and the fungus provides the nutrition for a uh, growth and germination so there is no need for um uh, endosperm in an orchid seed at all 